we go. Hi, I'm here with Magnus, the president of CORDSA, the Canadian Organization for Rare Diseases Students Association. And I'm going to interview him today about our organization and what it means to him. How are you doing, Magnus? I'm doing good, Jane. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, so what is the, what is CORDSA? What is the Canadian Organization for Rare Diseases Students Association? <clears throat> yeah, so CORDSA is uh, a student-led initiative on the University of Alberta campus. Um, we were founded in 2017 as the National Organization for Rare Disorders Student Association. Um, we were, so we were associated with our parent organization, NORD, at the time, which is based in the States. Um, but we recently changed to CORDSA just to try and be a little bit more local and patient-focused and relevant in, in this area. Um, so that's kind of how we started. Um, obviously, like I said, we're a student-led initiative. We're very focused on patient advocacy and um, providing patients and anyone really affected by rare disorders with the resources they need to um, live the best lives that they can. And um, it, it's a lot of fun. It's great. <laughs> That's awesome. And why did you choose to join CORDSA when you started at the university? Yeah, so um, my little brother suffers from a rare disease called creatine transporter deficiency. Um, and basically what that means is that he there's a genetic mutation to um, one of the proteins that helps creatine get to his brain. And as a result, creatine doesn't get to his brain. And so he's got an en energy deficiency um, in his central nervous system. So he has a very underdeveloped brain. And um, as a result, he's cognitively impaired. And I watched the struggle that my, my parents went through to get him diagnosed and a treatment plan and everything like that because a lot of people think once you get diagnosed with a rare disease it's it's all downhill from there but it's really not because there's still a lot of uncertainty and um it's it's uh it's not as simple as you know like a common cold or, or anything like that it's it's very very complicated and it's still they're still trying to figure out a treatment plan for them so um like I said, I saw what my parents went through there, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of anxiety, um, and it was really hard on them. And I wanted to really, I, I wanted to help them to begin with. And then I realized that it was, it was a lot bigger than just my brother. There's a lot of people out there who struggle with this. So it's, uh, it, it's, it, it's been not easy, but I've been able to make a, a, a real difference uh, because it's, it's such a small community. Absolutely. That's so such important work that we're doing here at CORDSA. Yeah. Uh, why do you think that University of Alberta students should get involved with CORDSA? What kind of difference do you think that somebody who isn't affected very directly like you are, what kind of difference can they make? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. Um, so there's a lot of other student organizations and um, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, resources for, for big diseases like cancer and Alzheimer's and uh, chronic pain or MS and all, all these kinds of things. And, and that's great. We, we need to have those things. But um, if you're part of those groups and part of those initiatives, uh, it's hard to get a face-to-face -face, uh, interaction with those people. And even if you do, it's uh, it's very superficial. You, you don't really get to know these people. Whereas with a group like ours, because we're working with a relatively um, small community, like there's not there's not a lot of people that are affected by a certain rare disease. Like the, I think my brother's disease is there's only been 120 cases ever recorded in in the world or something like that. So you really get to to see these people and get to know them and understand their struggle. And um, when you do something like an event with Quartza and you, let's say you raise money and you can give it to them for, for treatment or for some other resources and you can see just how happy they are because it, you really helped them. You, you did something for them. And that's, that's really something that's, um, 
that we pride ourselves on with Cordza because it's it's very personable and we can really see these people and um, making a, a real difference, something that you can actually physically see and, and be proud of. That's so important. Yeah. Um, and what opportunities have you had within Cordza to do just that? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's also a, a good question. So um, I started out as an external director. So um, my first big task was I helped organize a panel event one night. And so we, we were networking with a lot of people on campus. We had um, a, a rare disease researcher come and talk. And we had a rare disease patient come and talk. And then we had my stepmom actually talked um, as well. She gave a, a, a wonderful speech. And then um, we had someone from the Rare Disease Foundation as well come and speak. And so my job was to, to recruit someone from the Rare Disease Foundation to come and speak and kind of inform them of what was going on and, and guide them and everything. So that was that's just an example of what we do. But we... We have lots of different um, adv advocate opportunities. Uh, like we do a lot of fundraising, and um, like last year we, we had a big fundraiser for Mito Canada, which I, I know you remember. And uh, it's uh, it's again a lot of networking. You you're trying to make connections and, and figure out where the money is going, and trying to make other connections to. Um, to get some some sponsorships and money to to give to these people, um, so that's another advocacy op opportunity that we've had. So fundraising, um, educational events, and then um, we we also have meetings with with a lot of uh, I, I don't I don't know what the right word is, but very powerful people on on campus. Like we've had meetings with. Um, the chair of medical genetics at for uh, to discuss rare disease day, um, which has led us to this year. We're very excited to be part of the faculty of medicine and dentistry's rare disease day. They want us to help us organize that. Um, so to, lots of opportunities like that to try and you know interact with these patients and and family members and researchers and other groups that are also trying to help make a difference and. And um, last year we donated to another cause, uh, a local cause called the Steps Program, which I know Jane, you've also heard of. And um, we we donated a couple. Um, I'm, I'm going to call them toys for the for the kids to play with. And uh, we we got to see pictures of, of them using the things that we donated to them. So it was it was really incredible. Mm -hmm. No, I remember that event. It was super valuable and uh, rewarding to be a part of that. Absolutely. Um, and so general members and associate members that join us this this fall, mm -hmm. I'm sure they can expect to participate in these events and participate in Road Disease Day. What else can they expect from their participation in Quartza? Yeah, so um, general members and associate members come, there's a lot of... Um, volunteer opportunities like you said so they can help us run these events and and even help us plan these events because um general and associate members can attend meetings and um they're always everyone's welcome to speak so um we always like to hear everyone's ideas and they can definitely help us plan these events and and implement them um but there's it's not just about the events they can also like they can attend the meetings and 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 like I said, they can help us uh, push into the general direction that we're going. And um, yeah, so there's that. They can come to meetings and and they'll get to they'll get to see exactly what we're doing because they'll be on the ground. Mm -hmm. No, I really encourage everybody to to join as a general or associate member because yeah. it's such a valuable team to be a part of. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, lot, lots of opportunities, and and honestly, some that I can't even I can't even think of right now because uh, the the everything changes, and there's always something going on. So um, there's always always something to be part of. Mm -hmm. Well, I encourage everybody who's watching to keep up with our interviews, and thank you so much, Magnus, for talking to me today. And no, thank you for having me. I I really enjoyed it. Awesome. <laughs>
Thanks.